They say the truth hurts, the truth hurts So you about to feel pain, and I gotta do her God said I gotta do her, cause it's off with the name Savage Truth, Savage Truth It's the Savage Truth, the Savage Truth um, sorry, I got in a bit later. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so um, I like what you're saying, Pastor Roy, about the decentralized, the desensitization by social media. That's definitely true. Um, and also what just Howard, Howard just said, I, I've heard about five, lang five love languages between couples, but it's interesting to hear that we also need to learn the lexicon of other people around us so that we know how best to communicate with them. So that's really interesting. My theory has been, I'm a huge introvert all the way growing up. I've been like enjoying my comfort zone in that regard. And it's the one biggest uh, challenge I feel uh, since becoming a Christian. Uh, the whole enjoying your comfort zone and being, it's finding it just really difficult to like step out of your comfort zone and reach out and help other people. And I think this is like a confession for me when I look at Philippians chapter two, where we are being called to have the same mind that Christ had. And uh, verse 3 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. And then each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. I feel like that has been one of the hardest things for me uh, to grasp as an introvert who is a Christian now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I like that, Pastor, you're going through, uh, you're, taking, you're checking out, uh, you know, working on your mind through a therapist. And I feel like a person like me may also need that kind of experience just for someone to help me work through how do I step out of this comfort zone? Because the Philippians chapter two, it walks on, it walks us on by saying that Christ himself, who was God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself of all that so that he'd come and die for us. And I feel like that's the challenge that we Christians who may also be introverts. Uh, have to address that. So I don't know what you got to say about that, but I definitely think that people like me have a harder time stepping out of our comfort zone too. When something is going on out there, someone's getting hurt. Sometimes we are expected for sure to step out and help them out. But then our temperament sort of keep us from, you know, we're not so used to stepping out of that comfort zone. So I don't know what you got to say about that. Yeah, I would um I would say that that I agree, right? The weird thing is people don't think I'm an introvert. And I am. Um God just weirdly put me in this position and has now groomed me to be this version of whatever I am currently. <laughs> um but honestly like even in public, I'm not one to speak to people in public. Like I don't normally like I'm normally in a store, out of store, I'm not, but then when I, when Jesus be like, you know, you got to say something, I'll be like, Come, I'm just trying to get out of Walmart. I'm not trying to be in a deliverance ministry in the dairy aisle. Can I just go? And Jesus is like, nope, say hello. And I'll be like, how you doing? They'd be like, everything in life is just horrible right now. And I'm like, oh Lord. Um, And it's, and it does. And it's not because I don't. And actually the, 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 the one thing that I've learned about a lot of people who are introverted, who are Christians. I found a lot of them actually have strong discernment. And the reason you are in you 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 actually start growing in introversion as you grow deeper in your faith because you become more sensitive to people's spiritual problems and they become more burdensome for you when you let people get close to you. So you actually like when you finally get to know somebody and then like God reveals things to you, you're like, that was a lot. How about I keep people six feet away? Because when they get within this bubble, it gets a little bit difficult because I think as we grow in spiritual maturity, you also grow in spiritual sensitivity and spiritual sensitivity will drive you to introversion. This is why prophets were in the mountains by themselves. Right. Because like to be around people is like all of y'all doing something wrong and God is mad. I can't even talk to y'all right now. Right. But and so and I think a lot of times as you as you learn more, we have to be mindful and make sure that we don't let what we feel about people actually give us the excuse to remain introverted. We've got to be prayerful about how to use what we're discerning, because what I realized getting older 
is that the reason I've always been so introverted is because I could always feel people. And what I felt in people made me not want to be around them. So I would withdraw from situations and I would like to be by myself, but it wasn't because I don't like the company of people. I just don't like the way my spirit feels around people who were dealing with different things and I didn't know how to process it. So it just made me withdraw from like public spaces or like even as somebody who was a Christian rapper, like I hate it being in crowd. I still hate being in crowded places. Right. We were on the resort and I told my wife, I said, I feel like I woke up one morning and I don't know why, but like I felt like all my spidey senses was tingling and it was weird. I told my wife, I said, I feel like I can feel every sound in this room, like every plate hitting the fork, every bird chirping, every conversation, everybody scooping. Like it was so overwhelming. I was physically getting nauseous. I'm like. I need to get out of here. Like, I don't know what it was that I was trying to, um, that I was starting to feel or what I was experiencing, but I did not like it. Like, it did not make me comfortable at all. Um, and that was even new for me to be in a space like that and then to just feel that, um, to feel that, that presence and that pressure. So from an introversion perspective, I think you've got to, Right. Like you've got to be mindful of when God speaks and not just try to be a socializer. Like when God puts it on your heart, like you'll be able to tell the difference and be like, I should talk to this person. Right. Like my you're like my wife says hello to everybody. And then there's people she's just like, how are you doing? Right. And then when she like it's just one difference, even in that greeting that she uses that then connects her to somebody on a deep level and then they start sharing something. Right. But that's even her being obedient and someone who says hello to everybody being sensitive to when the spirit asks you to say something different. Right. So even for someone who doesn't speak often, you just have to be very mindful of what God calls you to speak. And he's not going that God's not going to make you be different. Right. Like he's going to use you where you are and he's going to draw, he's going to draw people to you. Um, you just have to learn to deal with the discomfort that you feel when people get close enough for you to sense their spirit. Because that's one of the, like, especially when you spend a lot of time in God's presence and then you get around people, it's like, I want to go back to God's presence. <laughs> um, and it, it, it does. It's like, no, people suck. I don't want to be around people. Like, I don't like people. People suck. Uh, most of them are fake. They're not genuine. They're hiding things from themselves, from the people who love them. Right. Um, and it's just like it's it's hard to it's hard to feel um, on a regular basis like that. But we've got to we've got to progress through it. But that would be my that would be my uh, my my thing there for from the introversion. Just listen, be mindful, listen to God and be sensitive um, to when he's asking you to speak. Don't try to change who you are. God will change what he needs to change. And I can say that from experience. My wife still laughs at me when I speak to people in public. Like my wife will look at me and be like, who are you? Because she was like that. That's not who I am at all. But God will God will use what he needs to. And he'll he'll develop those things as you as you're obedient and give it over um, to him. So that's what I got. And that's um thanks John. And Alex, you've had your hand up for a minute. I see you in the closet in your speaking place. <laughs> yeah, just so you don't think I'm like stuck in the closet. I have a love seat. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is my prayer closet slash uh what do you call it? Like what you're talking about, like the um sensory overload. This is how I get away from my sensory overload. <laughs> yeah. I, I get, kids are supposed to know if I come in here that that means that he needs a second. Okay. Um Man, so that it almost changed what I was going to say because that whole introvert thing is pretty deep. I've never thought about that side. But so I've taught through the story on the Good Samaritan like two different times. I went through a whole preaching series on it and like basically just like looking at each like character in that story and just like focusing on like, you know, the certain religious people and everything like that. And just like what Maya said, like one of the things I learned through going through that is like, I agree, like. I think that, um, like, number one, I do think we don't help people because it's inconvenient. We would have to think that, 
you know, those religious people were, were definitely on the way to the temple. So they had stuff to do. So I get it. Like, I think sometimes a lot of times it's a good excuse. It's a valid excuse, but like, we won't stop and help people because we're like, dang, I, I man, if, if I do this and they're going to start talking, like if I, yeah. if I fulfill, ask them how they're doing, then they're really <laughs> going to tell me and I got to go and all those things. But like, the thing is like, it kind of is the, the silliest thing, like to think of like, say if I'm running like the church and which would be the, really the same thing as the good Samaritan story. Like, and I'll, I had to like go out of my way to not help someone so that I can make it to church on time. That really defeats the purpose. I mean, Jesus talks about like the Sabbath. He's like, you know, you guys don't say that you don't want to use the Sabbath by like not helping someone who's got an ox in a ditch. Like that defeats the purpose. Like that's not what the Sabbath was created for. It wasn't to hurt people. So I think about like that inconvenience, but I also think that it comes from being burned. Like, I think like, I think we, we allow, we let circumstances, like we give a homeless person money one time. And then like that, we find out that person bought drugs with it or whatever. We're like, see, that's why I don't help homeless people no more. Like, like maybe even like that paranoid, like growing up in the hood kind of thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, the old shopping cart rolling in the parking lot gig, huh? <laughs> yep. do that. They do that, and then they finna hit my car. I, there's someone around the corner, and they're going to go in my car and steal all my steal all my stuff out of my car or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. maybe that's what the religious people were thinking. Like, aha, uh-huh, the old wounded guy on the street trick. I ain't falling for that one. Like, maybe we're just yep. paranoid. Gas, man, gas that, can that, at the gas camp at gas can at the off ramp. You just ain't right. got no gas again, right? Like. All right. <laughs> But John hit on something that that made me think about like on the opposite spectrum because he talked about being an introvert. And I would just say like to what you said, like now I'm thinking about more of a gift because like me as being an extrovert. And I think I've joked with Howard about this sometimes. Like I I said something and he was like, oh, that was super good, like profound. And I'm like, "Woo, good, because I say so much (laughs) stuff because introvert. They're like, I think it's like a, always like a hit or miss. You know what I mean? Like, so if I say something like really good, it's kind of like Michael Jordan, right? Like Michael Jordan always made, made a lot of points, but he shot a lot of shots. Right? So <laughs> yeah. I think for an introvert, like I've always noticed, like, like my father-in-law, he's a super introvert, but when that joker, like when he says something like it's actually pretty meaningful, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like he doesn't waste his words. Like, so when he says something, everybody's like, eh. they're like, dang, dog, that was pretty good. Cause like, <laughs> He doesn't say stuff. Yeah, so I would just in the challenge for for some introverts is that like I think it, it's more genuine when introverts help and and do things because it's not it's not fake. I will say I'm not knocking extroverts. I'm not even saying that I'm fake. I'm just saying like extroverts sometimes are harder to figure out because you're like, all right, which one of this is just your bur- bubbly personality? And which which of this is like you actually care? You know, what I, does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah, it makes perfect sense because I and when I and when I, and again, right now, just a personal example. When I first married my wife, my 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 wife is that person, like right? She's bubbly, she loves everybody, and I and mm-hmm. I used to listen to her talk on the phone, and right. she ended every conversation with "I love you." And I told her one day, I said, "It makes me wonder if you actually love me because you love everybody." Right. I, I said right. Like it's weird. Like you say it to every, like it's punctuation <laughs> on every sentence. Like it, at some point yeah. I'm like, do you just say that? Do you? Right. And I'm like, even if you mean it, like how can you have so much to give around? Right. It just, but it is yeah. like when you're, when you're nice to everybody, when you speak to everybody, um, when you go to like share a word with somebody, they're like, yeah, you were just talking to 12 people over there. I'm just mm-hmm. next on your list. So it is harder for people to differentiate um between somebody that's you know like john the baptist who's been talking constantly (laughs) and then he walks up to you and be like hey i got a word for you they're like yeah you've been having a word all day you've been over there just running um so i think it is sometimes harder for introverts i mean for extroverts because you've got to figure out a way to almost be like deliberately different when yeah. you're doing something you normally do. So like when I approach you, I got to try to approach you almost in a different spirit or in a different way, because like yeah. you've probably seen me walk up to people and talk to them and um, and whatever yeah. else. And I and I've seen that example in people in my life, like people who are who are very, um, very cordial, very hospitable 
And it like after church, it seems like they're talking to everybody after church. And then it'll be one Sunday, like they'll pull somebody aside, like they got a word for them. And I can see that person is right. Like it's harder for them to receive it. Where like when I pull somebody aside and have a word for them, like the last time I did that, somebody actually ran and somebody ran around the church and ran into a pole and split their forehead open. And everybody was like, Pastor Roy can't get no more words because it requires first aid at church. Like, I'm dead serious. Like, the dude was so excited about what I said. He ran into a pole. And, like, I, and I've, I've done that once, right? Like, and I'm not going to do it again where, like, if you've got somebody who's doing it all the time or it even looks like you don't know what they're saying, right? But, like, you don't see me with my hand on somebody at church. Like, I'm shaking hands and I'm moving on. So, like, when you see me with my hands on somebody praying, it's it's like a unique situation where you've got other people where it looks like they're always doing it. So I think it is harder for um, for extroverts. Um, and hospitality is a gift in itself. So like when oh. you've got hospitality and exhortation as a gift that you normally operate in, it's kind of sure. hard to have another level <laughs> of exhortation when your normal status, your normal, you know, like your normal platform is to exhort, right? So- what you need is for somebody like me to come along, tear them down, and then you can <laughs> exhort them, and then it feels better, which is why me and my wife work well together. Because everybody like, we a two-hit combo. I lay them down, and she lift them up. So it's, you know, it works It works out. But but it is, Man, it is hard. I, I, John brought that up. That's a good, that's a good, another way to look at that. I like adding that introvert, extrovert, like people's temperaments with how they serve. That's a, that's a good thought. I'm glad he brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sunshine, you had your hand up and then I'll go to Maya. Yeah, um, believe it or not, I'm an introvert as well, uh, who was conditioned to be an extrovert. You know, you're smart. So people always want you in the forefront, you know, speaking in this place and doing this and doing that. But I've always loved my quiet time, my space. But this um, conversation about introverts has actually been very convicting. And I'll say that because people have always tended to share their problems with me. And um, even though I do like being around people at times, I will avoid people or avoid conversations because with wisdom comes responsibility. And now that I know you have an issue, I can't pretend like I don't know. And therefore I can't, you know, um, yeah, so th this has just been very convicting because it's sometimes um, it's a lot less work. Yeah. To have, you know, I, I'm like, why am I always the person? I mean, even as a little kid, yeah, you know, I had friends who shared very personal things with me that I went to other adults to tell about because I'm like, this can't be happening. But I was always that person. And. I, I walked around with this weight because as a kid, I didn't know how to release it. Now, as an adult, it's a lot different, but I don't always want that responsibility. So this whole conversation has been very convicting because I will avoid people on purpose because like, I just can't do it today. And I know that's what not what God called me to. So I have to do better. So thank you, Pastor Roy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> See, look, this is what I do. This is what I do. You know, I bring the conviction. Um, and it's and again, and it's and I and I and it's because it's real stuff, right? Like it's you know what I mean. Like when I reach out to somebody, it's because I have to, right? It's it's not normally because I want to. My my daughter asked me the other. I just finished looking at the screen time report on my iPhone, and for the last week. Like 70% of my iPhone usage has been me playing Mario Kart, right? Like, because other than that, I don't really use my phone. I'm playing Mario Kart. I'm like ranked number one in the world right now. Um, But it's like, I'm playing the game on my phone. And my daughter was like, you don't like text people or because I don't have like, I have LinkedIn on my phone. I don't, I have Discord on my phone, Um, but I, I don't. And she was like, you don't really text people, do you? I'm like, no, I text y'all when y'all ask me a question. But there are very few people who actually text me because most people don't like where our text messages end up. Because somebody will send me a text message, what's going on? How's the family doing? Oh, my wife tripping. You know what I'm saying? It's your fault. Like, that's normally my response. If you tell me your wife tripping, 
it's your fault because you the head of the household. So if you did something wrong, <laughs> I think Alex texted me. I think Alex texted me that one time. He was like, yeah, I did something stupid. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you did. So go apologize. Um, But like that's, you know, but that's the nature of that relationship. So I don't, but for that same reason, like I don't get a lot of, uh, <laughs> Did, 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 so Howard's joining back and changed his name from I hate Howard to I love Howard. That was a weird uh, Zoom name to choose, <laughs> Howard. Um, but yeah, but, I, but, I, but you're absolutely right. It is, it's like to follow that conviction to say like, this is um, what, we're, what we're doing. And John, we are going to, I am going to transition to the reparenting question. I was trying to wait for kid. Uh, Kid Casper, because he's one of the ones that asking. He keeps saying he got internet problems, so he'll have to catch the video later. But um, but yeah, but uh, but it is a it is convicting, Sunshine, because like because of that, like I have to be oh right. I'm very mindful about being obedient of who God tells me to speak to, because I know mm. I don't want to speak to anybody. <laughs> like I'd rather just chill. Like I, I told my wife, like I'm on vacation this week. And I'm going to start working on writing my books. But I told my wife, I said, I genuinely want to do nothing. That's what I want to do. Like, I just want to rest. I can still barely walk. Like, my knee still hurts. Um, and I still haven't got an MRI because my doctors are getting on my nerves. But, um, and I'm like, I just kind of want to be lazy. Like, I want to lay down somewhere. But, like, I can't. And then randomly, every time I reach out to somebody, they were like, man, I was just about to text you. And I'm like, Jesus, stop doing that. Cause you like keep confirming I'm supposed to be talking to people today. Like I wanted to relax and watch Seinfeld, but, uh, but it is, it's just, you know what I mean? Like you said, it's, it's, it's being mindful of that. And then I've, I, I have grown and I joke about it a little bit. I have grown to understand the power of discernment and how important it is, especially in trying to help people navigate through situations and circumstances that like a text message from you like can redirect someone's day or week or career or relationship because you're being obedient. Um, so to Alex's point, like if, if you're not somebody that talks all the time, be very, very mindful of when God does tell you to speak. Um, because they're, they're it's normally time, they're time constraints <laughs> on what he's trying to say and, and what he needs somebody to hear. Um, so that's what I try to, I try to be the most aware of. And I probably still fell at it because I don't like it. Right. I'm like over time, it's, it's like breaking me down. Like I just like, there's less of a delay between me hearing it and me doing it. <laughs> right. It used to be like, I hear it. And then I, re I resist it a little bit. Now it's like, I hear it and I might be begrud begrudgingly picking up my phone, but like I'm doing it like when I hear it. Um, and not trying to fight it um, as as much as I used to, but it is it's a it's a it's a process. I'll just say it that way. It's a process. What you got, Lissa? Um. So yeah, on the introvert tip, I'm an introvert as well. Um. And the the interesting thing is, I have found that the more you are diligent in stewarding the gift that God is giving you whether it be art, whether it be uh, singing or teaching, preaching, whatever it is, the more you're diligent in that, the more God <laughs> stretches you to the point where the things that you thought you were comfortable with, you no longer have a comfort zone. Um, and in just 2021 alone, I've been an advocate for almost 12 years now. <laughs> I had more speech engagements this year than in all the other years combined and every speech engagement I was like oh lord give me strength give me because you know it's one thing to know what to say but it's another thing when you are not as confident in your weaknesses per se whether it be physically or or just communication wise and with everything that I just said okay God you know what obviously this this is bigger than me. Every time I would say yes, he would just intervene. I had a meeting with the human relations manager for High Point, and I didn't want to reach out to him. <laughs> I actually made some phone calls, which I always pat myself on the back when I'm making multiple phone calls because with chronic illness, talking to people is very like draining. Um, and so 
I called around, I called this person, this person, and they finally directed me to, to him. And I was like, okay, well, let me just recite what I just said to the other 12 people. And he was like, yeah, let's, let's, I would love to meet with you in person. And I'm just like, <sighs> cause you know, and then <clears throat> I was like, okay, God, let me not preemptively stress myself out. I'm just going to go say what I got to say. Meeting went well, but through all of that, I have learned that when you understand that your gift is larger than you or that it's a part of the body, a contribution, it becomes one of those things where you're like, okay, God, I'm willing to go through the discomfort. And one passage that I've just been stuck in for probably a couple of weeks now, (laughs) because God likes, knows I like to read and then move on, but he was like, you're going to marinate in this. And it's uh, Romans 12. Starting at verse nine, it says, let love be without hypocrisy, detest what is evil, cling to what is good. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Take the lead in honoring one another. And that part stood out to me because he didn't say only take the lead if you're an introvert, only take the lead if you're an extrovert. He said, take the lead in honoring one another. Doesn't matter what your personality type is. And then it goes on to say, do not lack diligence and zeal be fervent in the spirit serve the lord rejoice in hope be patient in affliction be persistent in prayer share with the saints in their needs pursue hospitality bless those who persecute you bless and do not curse rejoice with those who rejoice weep with those who weep live in harmony with one another do not be proud instead associate with the humble do not be wise in your own estimation Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And I mentioned that passage passage because it's challenged me. Like there's a lot of things in there that require me to go out of my way. (laughs) Yep. You know, out of my comfort zone, what is comfortable to obey what the word of God is telling me to do. Like, as far as it concerns you pursue peace, sometimes, you know, if I communicate what you want, I don't like repeating myself in that. Like I told Lady Kena the other day, I'm like, that's one thing I'm going to have to work, uh, work on when I have kids because I don't like repeating myself. Yeah. So even like as an introvert, God takes our gifts and he uses those gifts to bless others, of course, but also call us out of the places where we're comfortable. Yeah, and it and I think that ties this section up well before we go on to reparenting because John read that Philippians verse as well, right? And which is which is like our family life verse, right? Do unto others, I mean, uh, or t- uh, consider consider others more significant than yourselves, right? So like all the things you got to do to do that is complicated, and um and right whether it's um you know us lev- uh, like leveraging our our, our introversion to have genuine connected relationships with people that that they're not used to or even our extroversion to reach people who are um, who are who are not commonly reached or to approach people who who, um, who don't feel like they're they're often approached um, it, it, I think it all it all blends together um, and that was that was a, a great conversation that took us through like an hour. They keep asking who I am, I just tell them I'm a Christian, occupation, a description, I just tell them I'm a Christian, nationality, ethnicity, I tell them I'm a Christian, keep the hyphens and divisions.